Looking for magic cards? Channel Fireball offers a wide selection of magic singles and sealed product. Use promo code LVD at checkout to get my personal token for free. Hello and welcome to another Historic Games video. Today we're taking a look at a mono blue artifact storm combo deck as voted on by my awesome Patreon supporters. And the reason this deck is now viable is with the recent addition of Inspiring Statuary in the format added in the latest Historic Anthology expansion. It's a 3 mana artifact saying non-artifact spells we cast have Improvise, meaning we can tap any number of our untapped artifacts to help pay for those generic mana costs. So Inspiring Statuary combines especially nicely with Paradoxical Outcome, a 4 mana instant saying return any number of target non-land, non-token permanents we control to their owner's hand, and then we get to draw a card for each card returned to our hand this way. So Paradoxical Outcome can potentially be cast for just a single blue mana if we have enough artifacts to tap while Inspiring Stature is in play, and there's a ton of cheap artifacts in this deck, even at zero mana, that we can easily play, pick up with our outcome and then potentially replay afterwards. So if we also happen to have a copy of Mox Amber alongside one of our blue legendary creatures like Emery or Psy, at that point we're essentially casting our Paradoxical Outcome for free, since we can replay that Mox Amber which will make blue mana once again. So Paradoxical Outcome is a very powerful card draw engine, and at the same time we're also casting a lot of spells since we're picking up all these free artifacts, replaying them, drawing more cards, and that all combines very nicely with Aetherflux Reservoir, which is the main win condition in the deck, but it also serves as a way to stay alive until we can assemble a big turn to kill the opponent, as a 4 mana artifact saying whenever we cast a spell, we gain 1 life for each spell we've cast this turn, and we can pay 50 life at any point and deal 50 damage to any target. So if we cast enough spells in the same turn, Reservoir will gain us a ton of life and then we'll be able to pay 50 at some point to deal 50 damage to our opponent, and presumably win the game on the spot. So that's our main game plan. Now let's take a look at the rest of the deck, starting out with our zero mana artifacts, where we have the full playset of Mox Amber, which can potentially tap for blue mana if we have one of our legendary creatures in play. Then we also have the full playset of Ornithopter, zero mana, zero two flyer, so it can also potentially chum block with Ornithopter and in response cast our paradoxical outcome to pick it back up to prevent a bit of damage in the process. Then we also have the full playset of Tormod Script, just another zero mana artifact, and can also potentially come up as a graveyard hate, although the main purpose is just being a zero mana artifact we can easily cast and pick back up. And then we also have the full playset of Aether Spellbomb, which gives us a bit of creature interaction by bouncing a creature if we spend the blue mana, but can also be a nice card draw effect that we can combine with Emery, Lurker of the Loch, which can help us replay artifacts out of the graveyard, so that can buy us a lot of time against creature decks until we can combo off. Then at 2 mana we've got the full playset of Mindstone just to give us a bit of additional ramp, also nice with Emery since we can sacrifice it to draw a card and then replay it. Emery definitely is the most important legendary creature in this deck, costs 1 generic mana less to cast for each artifact we control, so we can even cast it on turn 1 if we have 2 zero mana artifacts and an island, and that's sometimes worth it just to get an Emery in play early, and that will also enable our Mox Amber, and then can tap and choose an artifact in our graveyard that we can cast this turn, so we can keep getting back artifacts out of the graveyard, including our win condition Aetherflux Reservoir, which is the reason why we're not playing Karn the Great Creator, which could also synergize with Statuary since it's a non-artifact spell, so we can just tap for artifacts to play our legendary colorless planeswalker. But the problem is, if we happen to mill Karn with Emery, then we're out of a win condition potentially, so that's why just having the Reservoir itself in the main deck can be better. And then of course Reservoir can also potentially just gain us a bit of life in the process, while we are ready to set up and kill the opponent in one big turn. Then we also have two copies of Psy Master Thopterist as another way to enable our Mox Amber, and a 1-4 creature saying whenever we cast an artifact spell, we get to make a 1-1 colorless Thopter artifact creature token with flying, so that can also potentially be an alternate win condition, making a lot of Thopters can also buy us time by chum blocking opposing creatures, and they can of course also tap with Improvise using the Inspiring Statuary, so that can also generate additional mana, and for one and a blue we can sacrifice two artifacts to draw a card, which can also be a nice source of card advantage. Then we've got our four copies of Statuary, then full playset of Paradoxical Outcome can often chain together multiple copies in the same turn, and then three copies of Vidalcan Archmage, a 4 mana O2 Vidalcan Wizard from Jumpstart, saying whenever we cast an artifact spell we get to draw a card, so that's often something we want to get in play as soon as possible, which is why the ramp from Mindstone can also come in handy, and then play some of our free artifacts afterwards to draw a ton of cards in the very same turn, and of course also great if we can combine it with Outcome and a bunch of free artifacts. 
then we've got our two copies of Aetherflux Reservoir, and then last but not least, three copies of Flood of Tears, which also gives us more interaction, but can also be very helpful when comboing off, since for six mana we can return all non-land permanents to their owner's hands, and if we return four or more non-token permanents we control this way, we may put a permanent card from our hand onto the battlefield. So one scenario that's not too uncommon is that we're drawing a whole bunch of cards with Paradoxical Outcome, but we maybe don't have the mana to cast our Aether Flux Reservoir that we just drew, since we cannot cast our artifacts using Improvise with Inspiring Statuary. But instead, if we just have two blue mana untapped, we can cast our Flood of Tears with Improvise thanks to the Statuary, and then pick up a whole bunch of permanents, bounce the opponent's stuff back to their hand, and then put Aetherflux Reservoir into play for free using the Flood of Tears' ability. And now that we just picked up a whole bunch of free spells, we can cast those with the Reservoir already in play, gain a whole bunch of life, and just kill the opponent on the spot. So that's also why Flood of Tears is so important in this deck. And then going over the mana base, we've got 14 basic islands. We do need a lot of blue mana to cast our cards like Archmage and Flood of Tears, even if we have Statuary in play, so we don't want to have too many colorless lands, but we do have the full playset of Zelfren Void, which does help with the Scry 1 to assemble the various combo pieces, and can also help dig for more lands if we need them. So that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play with Totally Fine Hand. Mindstone into either Psy or Archmage, depending on if we draw third land. And then we're just hoping to find more cheap artifacts facing turn one Venerable Knights. Statuary could also come in handy. Aspirin, so it looks like a white weenie deck. So can expect to see. Venerated Loxodon, Banalish Marshal. Could make a couple blockers with Psy, or I could wait until we play Archmage first. I'm a bit light on blue mana, although I could potentially, if I play Statuary here, next turn play Psy using Improvise, play Mox Amber, and then still have double blue for Archmage, so I guess we can try that instead. It does mean taking a bit more damage but it maybe sets us up better to combo off in case they have interaction. Right, it's going to be a Legion's Landing, which is going to transform right away. And a Thraben Inspector. City's Blessing has been achieved. And this is Convoke for Venerated Loxodon. Alright, Sir Poins empty-handed. They had a pretty good start. Let's see how we can match up against it. So step one. I think play Psy using Improvise. Play Mox Amber, make a Thopter. And then I need one more mana to play Archmage. So we'll play Ornithopter. Now we can play Archmage. And play Mox Amber, draw a card. And even play Spellbomb here. Alright, and Paradoxical Outcome also looking good. So we can protect our life total with those Thopter tokens. Gotta watch out for Shafat Dunes. Sends in everyone. So... This can go here. This can go here, Chumpeloxodon, and I guess block another three-powered creature, or we can keep an extra token around. I guess for now this is okay, could also double block Venerable Knights to take him out. 
Yeah, this looks good. Get to untap, another outcome. So, step one, cast Paradoxical Outcome. This taps for blue, and then we can use Improvise to good effect. I could also consider bouncing the Mind Stone. I guess that's fine. I didn't mean to use the colorless mana for Mindstone, could have just tapped a Thopter token here, but it's okay. Flood of Tears, great pickup, so we should be able to just win here. Play a bunch of free artifacts, increase our storm count, paradoxical outcome once again maybe. Which is essentially free. And then Flood of Tears with Improvise, and then put Reservoir in play. Replay some more spells and kill the opponent. So yeah, they had an impressive start, but we managed to chain together just enough free spells here to set up the win. Play Tormund Scripts. And then could already fire off another outcome here if I wanted to. And then we'll go for a Flood of Tears. Although we could also potentially just win with uh, Sai as an alternate win condition if we didn't have Ether Flux Reservoir available. Alright, that should suffice. Flood of Tears. Put in Reservoir. And our Storm Count is already quite high. Gain 12. Gain 13, 14, and our opponent knows what's incoming. Aetherflux Reservoir for 50 damage to close out the game. Sweet, on to the next one. Alright, we're on the play. Uh, this hand is missing a card draw engine, but we do have Spellbomb and Mindstone for redraws and Statuary. So I think it's still keepable. Turn 1 Spellbomb, turn 2 Mindstone, turn 3 Statuary. And then if we find one of our legendary creatures, great. If we find Archmage, great. If we found Paradoxical Outcome, that's another great pickup. So we have a lot of outs as we're facing the World Tree. Could be some sort of Golos ramp deck. As we see a Cold Steel Heart. For now, play Statuary. And another Spell Bomb. And next turn we can start drawing with a Spell Bomb as well. Opponent has their own Mind Stone. Let's draw again. Alright, Archmage is nice. So I can play Archmage, play two free spells after. Also, there might be removal waiting for us. All 
All right. Next turn we can play Void since we've got plenty of blue mana to help us find maybe a paradoxical outcome. Opponent untaps. They could take out Archmage with their if near dead lands as well if they don't have any other removal. It's gonna be Forsaken Monuments that are setting up for next turn. And yeah, all their lands here produce colorless. So for now, I think we'll play Void. And Spell Bomb's probably good enough. Since it's just a redraw for one mana. Although Paradoxical Outcome is a card we really want to find now. Mindstone. And we'll probably tap like this. Another statuary. So I can draw with Mindstone in the hopes of finding a paradoxical outcome. Or I can play Statuary, keep up a blue mana. Can also draw with a Spell Bomb, I suppose. I guess we'll try that. Although it could also keep Spell Bomb to save Archmage from removal, which could be more important. So let us just sacrifice Mindstone like so. Picked up Psy, which I can play thanks to Improvise. And want to keep Mox Amber untapped. And then I can still sacrifice something with Psy. Probably just gonna pass here. Could see an Ugin's uh, Spirit Dragon wipe the board, in which case I might want to Spell Bomb Bounce Archmage. It's gonna be Extinction Events. Well, they can only take out one of them. Probably want to float blue mana first, just in case. That name's even. Could have also sacrificed Ornithopter to size ability. And then we'll let the blue mana go. Probably end of turn, sacrifice Spell Bomb. And still hoping to find a paradoxical. All right, so we can make some Thopters and sacrifice those. There's Paradoxical. So now we can Paradoxical picking up our free spells. And do I pick up Mindstone? I guess I do. Like this. Could also wait to outcome end of turn in case of removal, since I'm probably not able to completely combo off this turn. Although I guess there's still a chance I could if I pick up Flood of Tears plus a Reservoir. So I think I should still go for it. So we'll tap for Improvise. And then I still want to float this for Colorless. No Flood of Tears, so I'll just make a bunch of Thopters then.
And then we still have Sai's ability to draw more cards if needed. Could also keep an Ornithopter in hand in case of another extinction event. And in case we draw Archmage, we've got more ways to draw. Alright, we'll pass. Uh, and there's Ugin, which can't destroy much here. The minus three will just get rid of Sai. So that leaves Ugin at four loyalty. So if I sack two tokens, I won't have enough to kill Ugin. So I probably just want to sack one Thopter. And then I guess I'll sacrifice a statuary since we don't really need to. And then we still get to take out Ugin. Emery a good draw. So I'll we'll start by attacking Ugin here. A lot of tears and Archmage go to the graveyard sadly, those would have been good draws. And then now I might want to play Void before drawing. Outcome's great, alright. Draw into it. And then Outcome for a bunch. Could even play Mindstone first as an extra card we get to play and pick up. So we'll outcome, picking up all of these, going into full control here just to give me the option to float my Mindstone for Coldless mana. Otherwise it uses the Coldless instead of using Improvise. All right, there's Flood of Tears, so just missing Reservoir. And there's one in the graveyard, so there's still one in the deck somewhere. Don't have any additional ways to draw cards. So, yeah, I guess we'll just replay some stuff out. And then next turn I get to pick those back up with my Flood of Tears anyway. I guess I could still draw with Mindstone. Only off chance that we draw Reservoir with our next draw step. Ornithopter instead. Can play another Mox Amber to make one more mana. Although I don't think that makes a huge difference here. And then I'll just discard a bunch to hand size. Alright, so next turn, if Emery survives, I get to pick up my. Ooh, never mind. Bojuka Bog will exile my graveyard, so that gets rid of my reservoir. So now there's only one left in the deck. Yeah, that could be problematic. They also have that Ifner Deadlands that can take out Emery, although we can play another one. Guardian Idol turns into a creature. They can activate Crawling Barons, so they don't seem to be paying too much attention to Ifner Deadlands. And we'll take 10. Another Statuary. Now I can play another Emery in the hopes of milling a Reservoir and then play it with the original Emery. 
We'll start there maybe, or I can draw with Mindstone first. Ornithopter not super useful. Could just redraw with the original Emery in case they do change their mind and use Ifner Deadlands. And then just hope to draw Archmage, another outcome, or the reservoir itself. Alright, Archmage is good. Can play it with Improvise. And draw some more cards. Still play Flood of Tears, so if we find Reservoir now we can still get there. Outcome's also great. Still get to play Land for the turn. And there's Reservoir. Alright. I think we finally got there. So we'll Outcome. Pick up all of these. Thirteen cards remain. Replay some stuff. Six cards left. Just have to be a little careful with Archmage here that we don't end up decking. But once we Flood of Tears, then uh, Archmage no longer in play, so we can play all our artifacts to our heart's content. We've probably cast enough spells, we're just casting Flood of Tears and I would get the job done. Alright, can do a little bit more here, just in case. Alright, that should be plenty. Flood of Tears. Tokens are gonna go away, might as well tap them. Put in Reservoir. Cast some more spells. And that should do it. Alright, sweet. So yeah, lengthy game. Our opponent had some pretty key interaction at certain points, but we still managed to get there. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a fine opening hand. Zelfron Void wants to dig towards maybe like a Mind Stone to play on turn 2, or more free artifacts to play after we play Psy and Archmage. And then Statuary combos nicely with these two as well. Opponent with a Sejiri Shelter into a Plains. Since we drew land 4, we can play Psy, and then we can decide if we want to play Archmage next turn or take a different approach. If we didn't hit our land, we could have also decided to play Statuary instead. Venture naming even. Alright, so I guess we play our first Archmage. I think I wait until next turn to play the second one so we can potentially draw even more cards if Archmage survives. It's gonna be a Banishing Light on Archmage, fair enough. Can maybe still get him back eventually with a Flood of Tears. And a Paradoxical Outcome. So... Play Archmage into Ornithopter, or we can play Statuary. Which will make a Thopter with Psy. And then we can still play Archmage.
and keep casting more spells. And then next turn outcome is looking good. Got a 4-4 Venture. And a Mall of the Skyclaves. Alright. So we can block it since it has protection from zero here, which includes Ornithopter and our tokens. Does not include Ether Spell Bomb, so that's the way to bounce it. And there's the Ether Spell Bomb. So step one, cast a couple more artifacts. A lot of tears also quite strong here. I guess we can use Mindstone. Mox Amber makes my paradoxical outcome free essentially. Hadn't played a land yet. And Emery on top. Might not be needed at this point. Just looking for Aetherflux Reservoir to end the game. So I'll start by attacking. Might as well. And then I want to outcome. And pick up as many of these as possible. Pick up Mindstone as well. Alright, there's another outcome. So should be able to find Reservoir pretty soon. another Mox Amber. Thermal Scripts. And I guess we can fire off another outcome. There's another paradoxical outcome, 21 cards remain. Just gotta keep playing spells until we find Reservoir, there it is. And then now should be able to Flood of Tears using Improvise. Put in the Reservoir. And then cast a couple more spells to end the game. Could have had an even higher storm count, just a bit worried about running out of cards on library. We're at 49. 68. Could have easily dealt more than 50 damage here if we needed to. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a interesting hand. It is missing lands 3 and 4 to ramp into Archmage, although Statuary with the third land will also get it done, and then we've got a bunch of free spells to play afterwards. So, assuming we can draw a third land here, this hand could work out. And then we definitely want to save up our zero drops. Let's see what we're up against. Irrigated farmland. Paradoxical outcome, also a nice draw with all these free spells, so... Picked up an Emery. Can play two mana Emery if we play Tormod Script first. It's gonna get countered by Tails End of all things.
and uh, Gideon of the Trials. It's gonna start applying pressure. Right, play Stanchery, hope they don't have a Pact of Negation here, which they don't. And then next turn, Archmage can hopefully draw some cards. We'll still leave enough mana for Outcome as well. You hold no power over me. So now with an untapped land, we get to Paradoxical Outcome in response to a Sweeper as well. So we'll pass a turn. And then we don't really mind if our opponent taps out for a Wrath of God. Not on my watch. We'll take four. Even though I could jump an Outcome, I want to wait for the opponent to maybe cast a Wrath. It's going to be Jason Ravel or Secrets instead. I've got them all. Bouncing Archmage. I guess a responsible outcome and bounce it ourselves. Alright, let's see if we can combo off this turn. Definitely looks like we could. We'll play Emery. And then Outcome picking up Emery as well. And a two Torment scripts. Still no Mox Amber, so now I probably just play Archmage and draw some more cards. Now our opponent did make a Gideon of the Trials Emblem, but we could gain more than 50 life to kill Gideon first with our Aetherflux Reservoir. Might want to keep one Ornithopter in hand, although I don't have another Paradoxical Outcome available. Just might make it difficult to then combo with a Reservoir if uh, we don't have enough free spells to play. Opponent didn't have a Sweeper last turn, doesn't mean that they don't have one, but I think I still play Ornithopter here. Ah, there's Reservoir, so yeah, if we had a little bit more mana for Flood of Tears into Reservoir, we probably could have won the game here. Discard a bunch of Islands and a Statuary. And let's see, another Statuary maybe? And I guess Flood of Tears bouncing Gideon also deals with the Gideon problem. You hold no power so we'll take four. And a Dream Trawler, that's fine. Alright, let's see if we can combo off here. Start things off with Spellbomb. Hmm. 
another flood of tears that I don't really need. And then I can play another Emery if I want, or I can play it post Flood of Tears. We're out of artifacts. Can draw with a spell bomb. Or we can keep it as an extra spell for Reservoir. Yeah, I think it's probably time to Flood of Tears here. opponent concedes. We had enough free spells to get up to 50 and then one shot the opponent now that Gideon is gone. So yeah, opponent's playing a control deck but a tap out control deck without a ton of counter spells. So that was pretty important for us to be able to win. So yeah, overall this mono blue storm deck, not the fastest combo deck although it does have a bit of interaction with those ether spell bombs. We can make thumpter tokens with Psy to chum block with as well as having access to Flood of Tears to reset the board. And our deck is also kind of resilient for a combo deck in the sense that losing one of our combo pieces, like maybe a Statuary or one of our creatures early on, isn't necessarily game over since we have so much card draw to find replacements. So that's also a nice thing about the deck. But yeah, as we mentioned, not the fastest deck. So a deck that's capable of presenting a turn 3 or 4 kill is probably going to beat us more often than not. And then counterspell heavy decks that can just wait and counter one of our key spells can also potentially have the better of us. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.